In this video, we'll be looking at the Famica charts that are produced by the Express Famica Plus capability. We call it Famica Plus because we can integrate the diagnostic analysis that we've done in Express with Famica data that we've either imported or developed manually within our Express model. As a result, we have a diagnostically informed Famica that's able to identify more system reliability issues than a standard Famica is capable of doing. Moreover, we will have established a framework for reliability analysis that can be easily updated as your design matures. If you find that you spend a lot of time redoing Famicas to keep pace with an evolving design, you might want to consider importing your Famica data into Express and maintaining it there. In Express, we can build a Famica either directly from a design, in which case it will not include any of the diagnostic information from analyses performed in Express, or we can build a Famica from an Express diagnostic study, and that's what we're going to do in this example. We'll just click on the Show Famica button from within a saved diagnostic study to create a Famica study that's linked to the diagnostics. Next, on the Hierarchy panel, we're going to specify the level that we want to analyze in the Famica. In other words, the level of failures that we want to list in each row of the Famica chart. In this case, we're going to say that we want to derive the failures from our lowest level components. If, on the other hand, we had said single level, then the failures listed in each row of the Famica chart would all be taken from the top level components and assemblies in the Express model. And just as we can in the Express Diagnostics, we can customize this level of indenture in any way that we want. So once we've set up the level of failure on the hierarchy panel, we're going to click on the Generate button, and a dialog appears that gives us a lot of options. At the top is a drop box listing a series of Famica formats, both predefined configurations that are supplied with the tool, and custom configurations that have been saved by the user. Let's look at the preset Famica formats. Notice that they fall into two categories. The first six begin with the word Express. These configurations will, by default, use only information that we would normally include in an Express model, including failure modes and effects, as well as information from the diagnostics. The last three preset configurations, the three that begin with the word traditional, are all MIL standard 1629A compliant Famica formats. The analyst can, of course, customize any of these formats to include a combination of express entity names and user supplied attribute values. All right, well, let's start by looking at the default Famica chart format, which is the Express Diagnostic Famia chart. Notice that we've got some panels down here that allow us to customize. In this case, we're just going to use this setup that this configuration provides. Then we're going to generate. And it's going to build our Famia chart. This is a standard Famica format in many ways. We have our item name, the particular failure that we're analyzing, the root causes of that failure, the local, next higher, and end item effects. This was a two level design, so the next higher was equal to the end item. And then as we move to the right, we can see we have the compensating provisions severity class, the failure ratio, the failure rate, and at the far right we have the diagnostic data. We can see in this chart we simply say whether the fault is detected or not and then the size of the fault group that it is isolated to. This size is in terms of number of repair items. It's basically the ambiguity group size that's used for testability. So this chart satisfies the requirement that we sometimes have to tie our Famica to our diagnostics to show that we're able to have our diagnostics achieve isolation of our most critical failures. Now another way we can do this is to select the second option here. And this is our critical failure analysis worksheet. Here we're taking each failure and mapping it through to a relative criticality that's computed based on the failure rate and a number derived from the severity. So it gives us a single list of ranked failures where our most severe and most probable failures are at the top and our least severe and least probable failures are at the bottom. For each failure, it lists whether it is detected and at the far right, the size of the isolated fault group. And working our way left from there, we can see the actual fault group number from the diagnostics that it's isolated to if we wanted to investigate that, as well as a number of root failure modes, 
lowest level failure modes that are isolated into that group. Finally, there's a key indicator here that says whether or not this failure is uniquely isolated. And what we mean by that is, does this failure isolate into a fault group containing only itself? Now many times when we have more than one failure mode in the same group, we'll see that it's not uniquely isolated. There's actually some situations, like this right here, where we can actually have our testability tell us we're isolating to a single component, which is excellent. And yet we're not really uniquely isolating that failure, meaning that there's multiple failures to that component that would all be isolated to the same fault group, which can be very critical. So we'd want to go back and take a look at this particular failure and say, why are we not able to uniquely isolate this particular failure apart from another failure? Our testability statistics would have told us we're isolating to a single part, but there are multiple failures of this part we'd happen to isolate to that same fault group. Testability analysis would not show us that, but the critical failure diagnosis chart would allow us to see that our diagnostics don't uniquely identify that failure. And recognizing this can help us reduce areas where we assume something was a critical failure when it was actually more benign. So it helps us make sure we're always taking the proper corrective action for a failure.